We welcome Jan Dalski with us today from the Sacramento Diocesan Council of Catholic Women. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. Will you first of all tell us where you were born and raised and grew up and went to high school and those sorts of things? Well, good old Sacramento. We were living in the Clarksburg area at the time and um, I went to Catholic grade school here. I went to Catholic high school here. I went to St. Francis High School and to Sac State. So I've been around a long time. And has Sacramento changed a lot? Since I was a kid, oh yes. Oh yes. Growing, getting bigger, more people. Do you have children and grandchildren? Yes, I have two daughters and I have four grandchildren. And all of them are in high school starting in the fall. <laughs> so they've grown up much too fast. Time races. Yes. I've thought a time or two nothing ever happened better than parenthood. Oh, it's yeah, it's wonderful. Do you have hobbies and what oh. do you do with your spare time? Well, I love to bake. Baking is my thing. I'm always trying new recipes. I love to crochet. I've been doing that. I realized it today, probably 40 years. That's a long time of crocheting. I love to garden. Can't do it so much where I live now, but uh, just fun things, average day, everyday things. Not too long ago, I heard a police officer say he would come to a person's aid at any time, particularly if apple pie was involved. <laughs> do you have a specialty? I don't do apple pie. <laughs> I'm better at cakes. My mom's the one that makes the apple pies. <laughs> and. Uh, Children and grandchildren have special orders and things like that? Yes, yeah, they have things they like. Now, um, how did you come to this work of the women's group? Well, I've been involved in giving back, you know, service to the church ever since I was a kid. I can remember catching the bus when I was in St. Francis and going downtown to help tutor the kids at St. Joseph's School, the grade school, which isn't even there anymore. And so I've been doing things for years, and, and at one point, Maybe eight years ago, I was asked to speak at one of our annual conventions on the opening night because we try to get people to come in. And so I thought, who can I talk about? And I started researching St. Paul, and I decided to talk about him. So that's how I got involved with the group. Do you still speak often? And yes. Every chance I get, um, I've done it for a number of years at the convention. This last year, I didn't because I was in charge and I had made way too many other duties. But I love researching things. The last talk I gave the year before was on the women doctors of the church. In all of the doctors that we have, and these are very religious people, we only have three women. And so it was a good story to talk to the ladies about and everybody's enjoyed that talk. Was your mother active in the Catholic Church? No. <laughs> she raised eight children. She had us all within 10 years and she was very busy so she really she did a few things with the Alta Society, but not a lot, not to, much, to the extent that I'm doing it. Are you from a long line of those from the Catholic faith? Yes, my parents and my grandparents, and I don't know how far back beyond that. But I've heard stories about my grandmother on my father's side, much like me, um, doing fundraisers back in the day, a long time ago, making donuts and selling them at church to help with the finances. Now, the Diocesan Council occupies how many people and places? Well, the Diocesan Council, the Sacramento Diocese consists of 104 parishes and we're located in Northern California. We go to the Oregon border and almost to the coast and as far down as Stockton where the Stockton Diocese begins. And of those 104 parishes, we have almost a million Catholics that are involved and I would say more than half of those are women. Now, in each of these parishes, there are altar societies, YLI, CLRSs. There's just all these organizations, Catholic Daughters. They all are part of these parishes. So that's how big we are, 24, 000, no, 43,000 square miles of Catholics. <laughs> and do you see some of these people yes. annually? Yes. As the president, I just got sworn in in our convention at April, it, this last April, um, not even two months ago. And um, I've actually gone up to Weed, which is in the Siskiyou Deanery area. Uh, back in May, I took my first vice president with me and we went up to their, uh, they have two meetings a year of the deanery. They pull in all the churches, the, the cities from around there and they come together twice a year and they have breakfast, lunch, uh, meeting. And I had the opportunity and the pleasure of going up and meeting with these ladies and swearing in their new, installing their new officers for the next two years. I also did that in Sacramento and also the Marysville Deanery. So it's fun. Yeah, I get to travel and, and see all these other women and see what they're doing. Now, I've had Catholic friends all of my life and have known priests who we all greatly admired. 
but only a nun or two <laughs> uh, for whatever reason. Uh, you know, my circles just didn't travel Well, you there. didn't know that many sisters. I didn't sisters. know that many. Uh -huh. Can you tell me more about the work of the nuns? We are lucky in our diocese to have a lot of sisters working in different fields. There's, there's three choices you have when you become a nun. You can either be a cloistered nun and pray, you can be a teaching nun, or you can be a nun that works in nursing. Most of our nuns in this area that I know are the ones that are involved in education. Um, and in other words, they work in their parishes doing uh, catechism, you know, for the children or adults that want to become, you know, Catholics. Um, the sister that I think you met, you said, talked about Sister Catherine Doyle. Um, she came to our convention. She works for one of the parishes here in town as the pastoral associate and does retreats and things of that nature. So each, each lady has their own specialty of what they do in the community, but we couldn't make it without them. We have um, new sisters in town at Presentation Parish that are from back east, the Dominican sisters, and they're young and they all wear white and it's just so fun to be around them because they're just so full of spirit and life and they're teaching and they're teaching at the grade school there. Now, <clears throat> the stories were legend when we were kids that the nuns were strict in school. <laughs> Would that be true in your perspective? I would think they're, they're still strict because they demand things be done the proper way, you know. They, they're teaching the kids and they want them to learn, yes. My grandmother was a great believer in uh, equal balance of love and discipline. Mm -hmm. that Spare is, the rod and spoil the child, right. yes. <laughs> Let's go back to the council meeting for a minute mm -hmm. because I got to participate a little bit in that. Do you always hold that at the retreat in Citrus Heights? Well, for years, um, let me just backtrack a little bit. We've been around since 1920. That's how old our organization is. That's when we were founded. And for years, uh, we had conventions, a lot of times at hotels. I didn't really care for that because to me, when you're having a mass, a celebration of the Eucharist in a hotel, there's too many people wandering around and it's not private. So a few years ago, we started having it at the Christ the King Retreat Center in Citrus Heights. And that has worked out so much better because it's more private. We have a chapel there and, and people can stay overnight and the rooms are nice. And it's almost like having a mini retreat. So as long as I can, I'm going to be booking the convention there because it seems to be the right place. That's a wonderful facility and mm -hmm. a great peaceful setting and lovely place. And they've been around since 1950. So they're almost as old as I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, if, if you've been, if your organization's been going since 1920, you're five years older than the interfaith group. Ah, yeah. What sort of rewards do you get from this kind of service that you're rendering? Oh my gosh, every day I, I feel blessed to be doing what I'm doing because I guess the rewards are working with people and educating them and giving them information and helping people grow in their spiritual life. Uh, I mean, there's just so many, it's hard to even say what all the rewards are. It's just, I feel blessed. How would you measure spirituality versus religion or Spirituality is a personal thing. It's how you interpret your religion. Whatever religion it is, it's a personal thing. Now, the Catholics are well known for prayer and music and mm -hmm. uh, sound doctrine. Is the women's group following that premise also? <laughs> yes, we have bylaws. We just uh, revised them this last year where we have things in, in perfect order of how things are done. And that's just what we go by, and we have our operating procedures and all of that. And yes, we follow certain procedures. Every meeting's the same. I had to laugh when I became president in April because they handed me a wooden box. It looked like it was homemade. And in it, I have a crucifix, a statue of Mary, a pitcher, um, the, the gavel. So it's all the parts of it when we have our meetings, a little candle. I thought, isn't this cute? My own little meeting kit. <laughs> the summer that my wife and I married, we went to see The Sound of Music. Mm -hmm. brand new out, getting rave reviews. And uh, we came home from that movie with a wonderful feeling of goodness and decency and making good decisions, all mm -hmm. of those other sorts of things. Of course, that musical's now old. <laughs> but um, does that have a good sense of how the Catholic Church feels for you personally? Oh, you mean what I get out of what I do? Oh, yes, it's wonderful. I, I just feel, you talked about Christ the King. Last weekend, they had a, uh, what they call a fiesta out there, and they have it every year. And they have a raffle, and you come out, and they have free food. You just come. You buy, buy raffle tickets and just have fun. 
It was so wonderful. I stayed till the end because I was running into people from different parishes that I hadn't seen in years. And yes, it was joyful and it was wonderful. And we had no books at the Mass. And we usually have missiles we follow and music. Everything was up on big screens. And so we were following along and singing and they had a band. It was, yes, and that's how, that's how the Catholic religion is. It's just fun. And are the Catholics involved in trying to get more Catholics to come back to activity? Oh, yes. We're into evangelization. evangelization. They say if you're a Catholic, you're evangelizing. You want to have people welcome. Right now, we're really working on Catholics coming home because there's a lot of Catholics that have gone away. So we want to get them back. Let them see what we're doing. Let them remind them of what it's like to be a Catholic. And we see that on bumper stickers and billboards and yep. on Catholic radio yep. and those exactly. sorts of things. Mm -hmm. What in the Catholic faith are you really passionate about? Well, besides my women's group, I am in the Catholic Daughters of the Americas organization. I'm a member of that group, and that group's been around since 1903. The group that I'm in, and we meet in the south area of town, we have been around, next year we'll be here 100 years. Our group, we're the oldest group in California, and we do things in our community in South Sac. Um, for instance, let me give you some examples. We work with our church, St. Paul's out there, if there's First Communion or Confirmation or things of that sort, we do the reception. When they have funerals, we do the reception for the family. We're just there, you know, to do things. Last, this last week at a meeting, we had uh, two young people come, an 8th grader and a 12th grader, and uh, we have an essay contest. One of our ladies died a few years ago and left us a lot of money to use for scholarships for youth. And so every year, I'm the lucky one because I'm the, the scholarship committee chair. I get to go around to the 8th graders' schools and give out the information for them to enter, or the 12th graders in that case, pick the winner, have their families come and give them $1,000 each for high school or for college. And these essays are wonderful because we have them write about their Catholic faith and what it means to them as a teenager. And we get to hear this from their hearts, how they feel. It's wonderful. So youth is kind of something I'm involved in, education um, as part of, you know, the Catholic faith. And because I went to Catholic school most of my life, there were just a few years in grade school I couldn't go. It's in my soul. It's in me. And does the nurturing and the nature of a woman help in your work? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Some of the things we do, um, men I don't think could do like we do because there's a, there's a group called the Legion of Mary, but there are men in it. Um, we have Eucharistic ministers. A lot of them are women. And those are people that go to Mass every day, get the Eucharist, and take it to people that are homebound because they don't get to go to Mass and get out. So yes, those nurturing things, a lot of the women that I know do these things. Let's go back to the Diocesan Council for a minute. Mm -hmm. You have a board? Yes, we have a board and it's standard, you know, the President, Vice President, Secretary, Treasurer, Parliamentarian, that sort of thing. And then we have commissions. Um, the National Council of Catholic Women, which was started when we were, 1920, um, and it's, a, it's the whole United States, they have it set up in a system and we follow their system. And they have commissions that deal with different issues. For instance, right now we have three what we call commissions, spirituality, service, and leadership. And so besides the executive board, I have ladies that, that fill these positions that do specific things that translate into what our community is doing. Now, on the interfaith side, we've had close contact with uh, Bishop Quinn, mm -hmm. Bishop Wiegand, mm -hmm. Bishop Soto. Mm -hmm. We work closely with Father Mike Kiernan, yes. some of the others. These are all really, really fine men, mm -hmm. men who enrich our lives and bless us. Um, what's the feeling just from you and those around you of the Pope? 